Francisco José Zamora Medina. Y estoy aquí con el moderador Kevin O'Neill para hablar sobre el partido político, el partido libertario de los Estados Unidos. Thank you very much, Francisco. I'm glad you could make some time. People watching, uh, gracias. Uh, very little español, um, so bear, bear with me. I'm Kevin O'Neill. I'm the communications chair for the Libertarian Party here in Hillsborough County. I'm also a delegate for the state party called the Libertarian Party of Florida. And of course we want to bring as much information to the audience as we can. And uh, Francisco that came up to us uh, in, in recent months and uh, I, let him, I let him know right off the bat, you know, I think you have a wonderful message and I want to see what, what we can do to get it to the people. So, um, Francisco? Welcome. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, your family background. Uh, you, I know you're a young man. I've uh, been on and off with your your family uh, being your mom in Tampa and your dad in Puerto Rico. You've been going back and forth over the years. Um, love to learn a little bit about you and about your experiences and what you've seen with government regionally there in, in Puerto Rico versus over here in Tampa and what brought you across to Florida. Bueno, yo tuve la gran fortuna de haber nacido en este país. Mis dos padres nacieron aquí en los Estados Unidos, pero, como usted me explicó, yo tengo familia también en Puerto Rico y en Cuba. Toda mi vida yo he pasado veranos y vacaciones en Puerto Rico y he podido tener una oportunidad de poder reconocer cómo son las, los problemas que están pasando, pasando en ese país. Lo que está pasando hoy en Puerto Rico es que hay tremenda deuda con el gobierno que el gobierno no tiene el dinero para poder pagar sus cuentas y entonces el pueblo de Puerto Rico está sufriendo mucho. Una cosa que para mí es muy importante es el bienestar de mi familia, el bienestar de mis amigos y también el bienestar de yo mismo. Y entonces lo que yo he visto en este país, aquí en los Estados Unidos, es que hay mucha, muchos cambios que están pasando que mucha gente quiere cambiar como son las cosas aquí en este país y me está dando muchas preocupaciones porque no solamente he visto estos cambios pasando en Puerto Rico sino también de la historia de mi familia que del lado de mi mamá eh, soy cubano he visto cómo esas ideas han transformado el país completamente y cómo exactamente cómo son ¿Cómo va a ser la la, el futuro del país si seguimos con estas eh, políticas que sinceramente no son simplemente injustas, pero también muy peligrosas, muy peligrosas para el futuro de nuestro país? But also saying that, you know, a lot of things are basically explaining that Puerto Rico is going in debt, and that, you know, I'm concerned for my family and things like that, but also saying because uh, half of my family is from Cuba, I have seen what these ideas and these, and these politics how they have transformed the country and, and, and where it could possibly take this country, basically. Yes, socialism, I think, might be the, the catch-all term. Yeah. Uh, social program after social program after financing of bonds and taxes on people. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So, um, Puerto Rico, I understand uh, you, you, you've been tr tracking their political um, uh, operations down there, how the people in charge of the politics and the government have been treating the people. Can you tell me a little bit about how the two-party system works in Puerto Rico and maybe contrast that possibly to the, you know, we call the two-party system here in the United States? In Puerto Rico hay tres partidos políticos, pero, lo hay, pero hay dos que son más grandes que el, que el tercer partido. El primer partido es el Partido Nuevo Progresista de Puerto Rico que quiere que Puerto Rico se vuelva a hacer eh, un estado de los Estados Unidos. El segundo, eh, segundo partido más popular es el Partido Popular, que básicamente quieren retener el estatus político que tienen ahora. Y el tercer par el partido político que es más pequeño, eh, 5% de la población, que es la, el Partido Independentista de Puerto Rico. Ahora, y en Puerto Rico la mayoría de la población sigue el Partido Nuevo Progresista, que se llama el PNP, o el Partido Popular. El problema es que esos dos partidos han tenido un monopolio casi sobre 
el estatus de Puerto Rico y, no, y también el, el poder de la isla y de su... Los dos partidos más grandes, el Partido Nuevo Progresista y el Partido, Democr eh, el Partido Popular, ellos tienen un control sobre las políticas enteras de la isla, que eres popular o eres PNP. El problema con ese sistema es que ellos, en mi opinión, trabajan juntos para mantener el poder de ellos mismos. No se trata nada de ayudar al país, no se trata nada de mejorar a Puerto Rico, sino a promover sus intereses personales de los políticos. Y para mí eso es algo muy peligroso y eso es lo que estamos viendo hoy día en Puerto Rico. Aquí en los Estados Unidos también existe la misma situación que Kevin va a, a seguir a, a que Kevin va, va a explicar and then basically you're going to explain basically the, the or introducing the two party system here basically. You're going to talk about that on our end? Not talk about it but you were you were So so basically um Francisco uh thank you. Um so uh what I understand is that in Puerto Rico similar to the United States you have sort of two main parties that are running things in mm -hmm. in Puerto Rico. And they, I imagine they're playing each other off one another. I think you had indicated earlier in a conversation that um, one party would be in charge you know, for one elected session, and then next thing you know, the next party's in charge, the next elected session, and this would just rotate you know, year after year, decade after decade. And in, in effect, uh, you know, nothing gets done except the government keeps spending more and more money. And um, you know, that, that's sort of the... The same behavior we're seeing here in the United States with the two-party system. Um, not sure if the audience knows, but there's actually in Florida, I think there's 13 or 12 different political parties. Ours, ours being the Libertarian Party of Florida. There's also a National Libertarian Party. And, um, you know, we've run presidential candidates. Uh, uh, Gary Johnson was the two-term governor in New Mexico, a state here. And uh, he was running for president over the last session. And in fact, um, what I'm getting at with the two-party system is uh, the presidential elections, which is where most people engage in the uh, uh, political uh, uh, types of things like voting. Uh, the presidential elections, for instance, they don't allow uh, other candidates to be in the debate uh, unless they're a Republican or a Democrat. Even though, in the case of Gary Johnson, he was able to mathematically win the presidential election because he was registered for elect, you know, to, to gain electoral votes, I believe, in at least 48 states. Uh, I think he needed to be a minimum of like 32 to mathematically win, but nonetheless, whatever the case might be for the registration process, uh, he definitely could have won as president. Uh, but he wasn't allowed to speak for the broadcast media presidential debate. So that's what I'm talking about by... Uh, the people in charge, the status quo, um, will not allow other voices to be heard. And we personally feel this is a, a crime against the citizenry, a crime against the voters. Uh, they say that, they, that, that voices can be heard, but the truth is there's all these systems in place to minimize the impact of us, for instance, who want to be left alone and not have government run our lives and be free to make choices, to live and love and work where we, where we wish, as long as it's, you know, as long as there's no... Um, crime committed, of course. <laughs> We're talking about legal commerce. Um, but let's move forward, unless you feel like there's a follow-up on that you wanted to talk to. Um, no, I mean, it was basically going to explain the same thing. So, so the key word here is kind of a rigged game. Rigged game in Puerto Rico, uh, rigged game in the United States, uh, we say. Obviously, we're fighting to, to fix that. Um, places like Europe, for instance, same story. Um, so, um, one thing I wanted to talk about regarding Puerto Rico is I understand there's a value-added tax that's been levied against the people. Mm -hmm. um, this is for folks who may not have been to Europe. This is common in Europe to have an additional tax for all commerce across, across everything. This would be on top of you know, the dozen other taxes that people pay when they buy something. Um, value-added taxes in Puerto Rico, do we want it in the United States? Hay mucha gente que dice que, la, que, el, que el Ibu, que, se, que es como se, en, en Puerto Rico se refiere al Ibu, pero en, por ejemplo en España eh, le llaman la IVA. Uh, el problema para Puerto Rico del Ibu es que eso 
que ese, ese impuesto va a aumentar el precio de los productos que requiere, que, que requiere a todos los ciudadanos para poder consumir. El problema es también con la situación política de Puerto Rico, es que Puerto Rico no tiene control sobre, eh, sobre la importación de productos. Puerto Rico no puede... Puerto Rico no puede comerciar libremente con otros países por su, por su estatus este, político. Y entonces, Puerto Rico solamente puede importar productos de los Estados Unidos o de, de, cabo, de, de, de la ley de cabotaje. Y entonces, con la IVO, eso, eso aumentaría los precios más altos a los productos. Y entonces, como la gente no puede comprar esos productos, lo, los negocios no pueden vender los productos, y luego la economía se sigue cayendo y entonces ahora estamos en la situación de lo que estamos hoy en Puerto Rico. Entonces para mí, en mi opinión, una, una, una IVA para, Puerto, eh, para los Estados Unidos no sería una buena, una buena opción. Simplemente porque ya hay menos, hay menos gente que tiene trabajo, hay menos dinero en los bolsillos de los ciudadanos. Y si aumentaríamos más los precios de los productos consumibles, eso va, vamos a llegar al mismo punto de lo que está Puerto Rico y además Grecia, que Grecia está igualito. Which thus we don't have the money. You know, it's, it's more money out of our pockets. We don't have the money for that. Businesses can't sell it. Businesses go out of business. Less jobs. Da, 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 and then we end up as Puerto Rico and as Greece. Death, death spiral. We call it. Um, productivity gets capped when taxes go up, and um, you know, as taxes go up, productivity is going down. And uh, right there, that X is where you cross that line. And that is not what we want in the United States. We already have enough problems with taxes, especially the federal taxes. So, um, as Francisco had said, uh, one of the things I love about his experience is that he has experienced things that typical American has not. Uh, typical American might be third generation American. Um, you know, they may have come from Africa, they may have come from Europe, whatever the case might be. You know, their bloodline got here, you know, in the 1800s or 1700s, uh, depending on which, which immigrant group they were. Um, now, the Spanish folks from whatever countries they come from, maybe in the last 60 years, uh, they started flowing in here pretty regularly. So, uh, Americans don't understand some of the problems that the Spanish folks in, you know, in today's world had back in their home countries. Um, okay, and, you know, so, you've got a ton of experience base. You're a graduate from FIU in Miami. Uh, you studied political science. Uh, you've obviously chosen the Libertarian Party. I'd love to understand what road you took where you ended up going through all the, all the different options you could have made and then choosing to opt for us? En mi decisión para escoger el partido libertario como mi partido, yo tuve que ver el pasado de mi familia, que no, tú sabes, que lo que fue que nosotros tuvimos que escapar cuando del lado de mi mamá escapamos de Cuba y del lado de mi papá cuando Tuvimos que salir de Puerto Rico en los años 60, cuando la, la inmigración puertorriqueña era más fuerte. Y lo que está pasando hoy en día otra vez. Uh, básicamente, siempre ha sido la misma cosa que está pasando, que el gobierno no está permitiendo que, nos, que nosotros los seres humanos podamos vivir como deseamos. Y entonces, para mí... Aunque yo, aunque, aunque yo he sido un republicano toda mi vida por mi mamá, por mis abuelos, que cuando vinieron aquí quisieran ser uh, republicanos, yo conscientemente tomé la decisión de creer en la libertad. Que eso es el propósito de este país, es vivir en un país de libertad. Entonces, ya cuando, cuando, cuando tomé la decisión de, de ser li, eh, libertario, Tomé la decisión porque yo conscientemente no puedo votar republicano o demócrata, porque para mí esos partidos no representan el ideal de la libertad que existe en este país, que, que fue 
la razón por la fundación de este país. Y mucha gente de, otro, de otra parte del mundo vienen a este país por oportunidad. No necesariamente por la libertad, pero sino porque hay trabajo, porque hay dinero. Uh, pero es la, la oportunidad que quieren los inmigrantes. Lo que los inmigrantes no entienden es que sin libertad uno no puede tener oportunidad. Y entonces para mí el partido, eh, el partido Libertario es el único partido, en mi opinión, que sinceramente y, y, y por 100% estoy confiado que este partido es el único partido que respeta la libertad, que logra la libertad como se tiene que, como se tiene que lograr. Y... And that's it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm fine. Uh, uh, regular. Y es el único partido que quiere lograr la libertad, no solamente para unos pocos o, 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 o por unos privilegiados, sino libertad igualitaria para todo el mundo. Todo el mundo en los Estados Unidos merece los mismos derechos, los, eh, los, la, las mismas oportunidades que cualquier otra persona. Pero eso se, eso se basa 100% por la libertad. Y, y eso, y, ser libre no es simplemente tener derechos, sino de ser libre del control y de las regulaciones del gobierno. That's basically it. That part. So, um, so you basically you may have a concern that this whatever you, whatever, uh, you saw going down in Puerto Rico for a political establishment, and maybe some of these other countries like Mexico or, or somewhere in the Caribbean, um, Ecuador possibly. Um, the last thing you want to see is us duplicating it here in the United States. Do you see do you see signs of duplication already happening, or do you see do you see the existing Florida legislature or the county government or the city government, um, you know, showing similarities to what you were seeing in Puerto Rico? No solamente Puerto Rico, sino también en el resto de Latinoamérica. La cosa que hay que entender es que Latinoamérica no tiene una tradición de libertad desde el principio de, de las colonias españolas en la América, siempre ha sido el gobierno español y la iglesia católica que han, que han controlado todo, la vida social, la vida económica, la vida política. Y entonces la, la tradición de libertad no es algo tan fuerte que lo que era aquí en este país, aquí en los Estados Unidos. Y hoy día el, el, el trend, vamos a decir, que mucha gente está persiguiendo es, tú sabes, vamos a tener este, salud pública, como lo que tiene Canadá, como lo que tiene Inglaterra, porque nosotros queremos ser como estos países. Y entonces, estamos con, tenemos una cultura que queremos duplicar lo que está pasando afuera, sino enfocándonos a los principios fundamentales que hizo este país. Y entonces, lo que está pasando ahora es que la oportunidad se está perdiendo y estamos siendo más y más y más como los países de afuera y luego y luego lo que está pasando es, es que estamos convirtiendo más como los países de afuera somos más pobres somos tenemos menos oportunidades y eso es lo que pasa cuando nosotros movamos de la, eh, movemos de la libertad y, y, y movemos hacia el socialismo y eso es, eso es una de las cosas más peligrosas que puede pasar porque si seguimos en este camino Vamos a terminar como Puerto Rico y Grecia. So, Basically, I said if we continue the way we're going, we're going to end up like that. Taxes on laughing. Taxes on having fun. Taxes on dancing. Uh, God help us. <laughs> um, so, so for the folks who, who may have uh, you know, just learned about the Libertarian Party, I'll, I'll give you a little background. Uh, we want government to be very small. Um, We want uh, government out of our lives in, in almost every case. We don't want them involved in our religion. We don't want them involved in our personal lives behind our front door. Uh, we we, we ha actually have a uh, rule within the Libertarian Party. It's a, um, a non-aggression pact, we call it. Namely, um, our political party will not, through force, uh, force anyone to do anything. Uh, we're not going to be... You know, burning the rice stack down, which took place in Germany. You're not going to be fomenting riots. Uh, you may be watching TV. There's all this black on white rioting going on. This is 
This is purely a media drummed up event based on a single fact. Yeah, this, somebody got killed, a cop was involved. Uh, the point is, it's not by accident that uh, riots are occurring. <clears throat> it's actually by plan. So that is not exalt at all what the Libertarian Party would ever do is try to create uh, any kind of fighting like that in order for us to push our programs forward. That is not the case. It's all about volunteering to choose to do this sort of thing. So um, they're all about small, small government. Um, uh, regarding corporations and business, we're all about property rights. So you know, I, I happen to own this house, thank God. Uh, I've been very fortunate. And um, if you're a mining company and you own 100,000 acres and you want to mine it, uh, within reason, um, you should be free to mine it. Uh, we don't want the water water from your property going out of the neighbor's property and destroying his property, but you know, within reason, you should, should be able to mine that property. And, um, and similarly, if you want to build a house, uh, with, you know, we obviously have a Florida building code here, so your house doesn't get sucked into a, a, the sky during a hurricane. Uh, we want your house to be sound enough so it doesn't get blown away. Uh, but, but within reason, you should be able to build your house. And uh, right now, we have federal, uh, federal laws that are deciding where water boundaries are and where you can put your home. And we're just completely, you know, it's, it's coming to a point where if you own real property, you almost don't even own real property because somebody else is controlling it. This is the type of thing the Libertarian Party fights to prevent. And um, we obviously need as much assistance as we can to uh, succeed. So um, you joined our party. Do you have any, any advice for uh, the you know, people watching this now about what, what they might choose to do with their vote? Para mí lo más importante que hay que, que hay que hay que mirar antes de todo, hay que mirar dentro de uno mismo. Y si usted o ustedes son de afuera, si son inmigrantes a este país, sinceramente yo quiero que ustedes piensen por qué ustedes vinieron aquí. ¿Qué fue lo que ustedes están buscando que no hubo allá? Que no hubo en, en que ustedes no tuvieron en um, Que no, se que no se encontraban allá en, en, en su país de origen. Si, si sinceramente lo piensan, el problema con todo, con la pobreza, con la violencia, con, con, la, la, lo, la, con la pobreza y la violencia que está, que está pasando en los países nuestros, en Latinoamérica, la única razón de por qué esas situaciones ocurren es porque el gobierno no tiene el control de poder proteger los derechos de, de propiedad privada, no tienen eh, los recursos para, para poder eh, asistir en la fomentación de un sistema donde el pueblo puede vivir su vida en paz y sin molestia. Lo que creemos nosotros los libertarios es que con la fuerza no se gana nada. En, en forzando a alguien para hacer lo que tú quieras es una cosa que jamás va a funcionar. Eso no es una sociedad libre, eso no es una sociedad próspera y básicamente eso no va a ser una sociedad que va a durar mucho tiempo. Nosotros aquí que somos nacidos en este país, o si somos inmigrantes, nosotros estamos aquí porque creemos en lo que es los Estados Unidos, lo que es el sueño americano. Pero, si nosotros no seamos fieles a, eso, a esa idea de un país libre, una sociedad libre, sin fuerza, sin coerción, Lo que va a pasar es que esta sociedad no va a poder continuar. Esta sociedad se va a desaparecer. Y entonces para mí que lo más importante es poder mantener, si no mejorar, la situación que está pasando aquí. Nosotros del Partido Libertario queremos conservar lo que era la América libre, la América próspera. Nosotros queremos más trabajos, más salud médica, Más, este, I didn't say choices. Oh, I'm asking you. <laughs> choices, uh. Hold on, hold on. Okay, options. Yeah. Opciones, there we go. Nosotros aquí en el Partido Libertario queremos más opciones en educación, en salud, en trabajo, 
en una sociedad libre uno puede escoger, uno puede escoger todo lo que uno quiera. Pero en un país socialista solamente hay una opción, que es la opción del gobierno. Lo que dice el gobierno, este es salud médico, esto es educación, esto, eso no va a funcionar, eso no puede funcionar ni continuar. Uh, Señor Francisco, I want to thank you very much for your time and, and making sure, yourself excellent day. Excellent day, absolutely. Uh, for making yourself available to your Spanish friends uh, whose first language might be Spanish and their second language might be English. Um, I want to remind the folks that we are a political party, uh, Libertarian Party of, of uh, Libertarian Party National, Libertarian Party of Florida, and in county here in Tampa where we live. We have the county organization, Libertarian Party of Hillsborough County. Uh, we welcome you to, um, if you haven't already voted, assuming you might be a recent immigrant, to register to vote. And when you do, you have to write in the words LPF, or Libertarian Party of Florida, in a little box that says Other. Uh, so please do that. If you may be choosing to switch your party affiliation, uh, please, same thing. You can go online at the, um, uh, for the uh, voter register for the county. Um, or you can come to our website, which might be better, which is lphc.org, lphc.org. And uh, the box to the right will give you a, ch a click through to the, um, the county uh, uh, register of voters who you can then change your party affiliation. Um, but to make a long story short, um, you know, there, there is no free lunch, as we say in America. I know there's been a lot of free lunches given out uh, to, to families. Uh, somewhat of a result of a collapsed economy. The point is the bill is going to have to be paid and the uh, Libertarian Party is interested in managing uh, the government's finances in such a way that if there is a bill to be paid it's something small. Um, obviously we have to operate, um, so we recognize taxes are required, so we, we recognize uh, good government will certainly have roads, schools, certainly a defense force type of military, um, Good government does not include world police or fighting world wars for decade after decade. Um, I can't even explain why we fight the wars we're fighting. Uh, um, uh, so we're all, we're all focused here in the Libertarian Party about getting the government out of our lives and allowing government to do their basic necessities. You know, keeping markets free, uh, keeping people from becoming victimized by scam artists, of course. Uh, certainly, uh, there would have to be a justice system because there are real criminals doing real crime. So uh, we are definitely in support of bringing people to justice. Uh, but uh, right now, um, there has to be a turn back from what we have today. It's, it's completely bloated. Uh, it's completely out of control. Um, we're probably breaking a law right now that we don't even know about <laughs> because our federal government creates like 10,000 laws a year. Uh, that's sort of the point of the Libertarian Party is we need to make this a sane uh, government system. Our people are going to do it. Uh, when we find candidates to run for office, um, certainly the party will have some type of role or at least uh, an acknowledgement about the candidate. And of course, um, you know, in all, almost all cases, the libertarian candidate is going to want to reduce government and possibly, you know, close offices, close bureaucracies, close um, authorities. There's all sorts of taxing authorities. Uh, channel side taxing authority is one, for instance. The football stadium is another taxing authority. Um, I, one could argue if we need a football stadium. I happen to like football. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to pay for it. Can't there be a capitalist capitalist involved who wants to put a new football stadium in or a new railroad or what have you? Um, anyway, so thank you guys for your time. Uh, you can come find us. We have a general membership meeting every month, uh, second Wednesday of the month. Uh, you can find us on YouTube, which you already have. And uh, uh, we also have a meetup system, meetup website. Uh, you can find us on meetup. That way we can send emails to you to communicate when our next event's going to be. And like we're doing now, we, we definitely have um, a regular series of interviews and expert presentations going on. So um, vote for us, join our party, and stay in touch. Muchas gracias. Saludos a ustedes. Muchas gracias. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Senor Francisco. Thank you, guys.